copyright and fair use affects everyone in the visual arts and it's not the most well understood area. If a misunderstandings of fair use and copyright leads to um, a, a dampening of, of artistic and cultural production, I think that's a, a big issue. I think people were still so fearful and they'd say, well, I'm not going to go write about that because uh, I may not get permission at all and if I do get permission I'm going to have to um, uh, pay a lot of money. Artists, museum curators, publishers, authors and teachers all use fair use every day. They need fair use to do the best work they can do. The constitutional goal of the Copyright Act is to promote the making and the dissemination of culture. And that's a purpose that we can immediately understand as being extremely consistent with the free expression values expressed in the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. The feature that does the most to, to equilibrate the competing interests of copyright owners and members of the public who seek to use copyrighted material is the so-called fair use doctrine. Fair use is the part of copyright law that allows people to use copyrighted material to make new work. We all build culture on top of existing culture. So all of us every day are in the process of, as we say, standing on the shoulders of giants. We are building on what came before us and we're adding to it. We're adding value to the culture by our own expressions. When deciding fair use cases, courts tend to ask functionally two questions. Is the use transformative and is the amount of material used proportionate, and if the answer to those two questions is in the affirmative, then the track record of the last 20 years indicates that almost without exception, that use will be considered a fair one, a non-infringing one. I think the code of fair use practices developed by the College Art Association is important for the field precisely because it serves to provide clarity about what uses of third-party copyrighted material may be deemed fair. We want to take on um, the fear of using copyrighted material. The CAA Code of Best Practices is a part, attempt to do, is to give the power to make reliable fair use decisions to practitioners themselves. The Code of Best Practices doesn't say what everybody in the world agrees on about this. It merely says, this is what we in good faith believe we deed from this law in order to create new culture. The Code of Best Practices is organized by the most common situations that visual arts professionals face when they need fair use, and they are analytic writing, for instance, writing in scholarly journals, second, teaching about art, third, making art, fourth, museum uses, and fifth, online access to archival and special collections. And for each case, for each of those situations, you have a description of the most common practices, the principle that allows you to apply fair use to those practices, and third, the limitations that allow you to know what are the limits of fair use in these situations. My hope is that the Code of Best Practices will allow us to focus on our core mission, doing what we really want to do, which is publish terrific books. We're really hoping that this new Code of Best Practices for Fair Use will allow our artists and scholars to work unimpeded on new and original work. I think it will free up scholarship, it will also free up artists, I think it will free up everyone in the field to do their work.